Happy holidays, everyone. Well, except for me, because I had to watch The Witcher Blood Origin, and man, I got a couple of things to say about this mess. Now, I have to mention that I can't show footage from the series and only images and trailer footage because of, you know, copyright reasons. I also want to say that I'm generally very analytical with technical things, so you won't hear me break down this story to an exact T because let's face it, it's just not worth doing. But do be warned, if you've been meaning to check the show out, you should know that I'll still spoil the story somewhat. Also, I've really tried to be as fair as possible when writing this script, because as most of you guys know who watch my content regularly on my main YouTube channel, I'm just not the type of guy who goes out of my way to criticize either video games and other media. But to be perfectly honest, Witcher Blood Origin had me cringing over and over again, and I almost fell asleep twice while watching it. And I'm gonna tell you why. Blood Origin is set in ancient times before mankind had arrived on the continent, when the elves were the predominant race in the world of the Witcher. And so we immediately get to my first rant in this video that I just couldn't stop thinking about. As far as we know, elves in the Witcher universe are supposed to look ethereal. Most of them in Blood Origin, however, aren't very ethereal or interesting at all, and they come in all possible shapes and sizes. The Ensith, which is what the elves are called in the Witcher universe, just look like regular humans with pointy ears. Pointy ears that look really plastered on. <laughs> the elves are also generally described to be tall and lean in the Witcher universe, which makes the show elves look really unimpressive by comparison. Eridan's actor is the only example of an actor that looks somewhat elf-like, but again, this is only slightly. They could have done a way better job with the appearance of the elves overall. Oh, and Avalach does not look very... Avalachy. This will probably be one of the bigger points of contentions from Witcher 3 fans, and I suspect it already is. He's very weasley and surprisingly ignorant to boot, which is something you just wouldn't think of when you think of Avalach. Again, he's younger than he is supposed to be like in the games or in the novels, but for first impression's sake, this is just not really that good. Personality-wise, most elves are also just like humans here. They're actually in truth no better than humans at all, constantly backstabbing each other and even using slavery, or at least it looked that way. Even regular elven citizens are just as bad as humans, so it's just really hard to feel sorry for them after the humans arrive considering how their entire civilization already treats one another. To be honest, it really feels like the elves have been so homogenized by the show's creators to such a degree that I couldn't care less about them. It's even described in the show that the dwarves supposedly lived on the continent before the elves, and that the elves basically hunted them all down, which again literally just makes the elves into carbon copies of humans in both culture and behavior. And yes, as you may have heard from other people, the language is also just way too modern and everyone keeps dropping f-bombs a bit too often, which takes you out of this supposed medieval fantasy world. And there's a lot of shaky cam. The fighting doesn't look that bad at first and it's properly gory and brutal, but after a while the shakiness just got too much to a point where it just phased out of whatever was happening. And speaking of the gore, a lot of the blood and wounds just look really unimpressive and clearly CGI. And I don't know how to describe the dialogue other than just meh. And some of the delivery is just absolute ass. There was one scene in particular that made me think of this. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Speaking of which, there's a lot of exposition dialogue. This show really suffers from a severe case of tell, don't show, which is unfortunate because when the dialogue is lacking in quality but makes up the majority of the scenes, that's just not a very good combination. An example here is a character that's at first seen locked inside a well-guarded prison, but in the very next episode he's free and he literally just explains how he ended up where he's at right now. Stuff like this happens all the time, where events that should have been shown is just explained away without much effort. Thankfully, there aren't very many jokes, but the ones that some characters do try to crack are just off-putting. Also, Terminator reference. Come with me if you want to live. This was probably the only jokey dialogue that actually made me smile because it just came out of nowhere. Oh, and it's said by the dwarven girl who was by far one of the more interesting characters of the show. The monsters that show up in the show, well, all two of them just look really low budget and the CGI could have been much better. At times the CGI just reminded me of PS3 graphics, especially at one point in episode 2 when a strange centipede fish hybrid monster chases after the main character. 
it just looks extremely silly and out of perspective. Some environments like this place just look really bad with the wavy 3D clouds in the background. There's also one nightmare sequence that's shared between the different main characters of the show, a sequence that's supposed to be horrifying. But because the, the effects aren't really the best and the characters are mostly forgettable, it just doesn't grab you. The show simply doesn't look that good a lot of the time. Oh, and the English subtitles are just absolutely hilarious. At one part, it literally said whoosh when someone was using magic, which made me laugh way louder than it should have. Now, what about the only A-lister on this show? Michelle Yeo. Yeo? Yo? Well, Michelle's character is pretty cool as she's actually good at fight choreography. But because the camera work is so shoddy at times, it's just really hard to appreciate her scenes because she's obviously doing the best she can. Other than that, she isn't really the main focus of the show, so there's really not that much to say about her. In general, the series overall just does not feel like it should be connected to The Witcher at all. They constantly try to capture the feel of the main Witcher show by trying to emulate things like the music, and considering it's Bear McCrary, I should have been floored by his music. Unfortunately, Bear's music is not enough to lift this show off the ground because the foundation that the music is supposed to be attached to is just not there. There's several things that just seem off. You see, with what little I know of the Witcher novels, people like Eredin shouldn't even be in the story as the NL elves had left the continent long before the conjunction of the spheres. But here we see Eredin get teleported to another world just before the conjunction happens, which is likely the world of unicorns that will at some point be used to travel between worlds. But one character the showrunners seemingly have skipped out on is none other than Oberon Mursitash. Or Mursitash? Sorry, I, I can't really pronounce these names, guys. Anyway, Oberon is the king of the NL Elves, the very same king that Eredin is supposed to murder to usurp his throne. Of course, as Sepkowski didn't really explore the history of the elves in the novels, the showrunners has had a lot of freedom of creativity. But it's almost like they played around too much with the events that happened long before the main series, which honestly just doesn't fit with the main continuity. Or maybe they do. As I mentioned, I haven't read the novel, so maybe I'm factually wrong on that point, but it still just doesn't feel like it fits, if you get my meaning. Most of the time, the show is trying to get you to care about characters that you've just become introduced to by having these dramatic, tear-jerking moments, but it feels so forced and it just falls flat. The only characters that you do come to somewhat care about are the two main protagonists, that being Ayla and Fjall, and then of course Skien, that being Michelle Yeoh's character. And again, this is only very slightly, and every other relationship in the show just feels incredibly hollow. I can't even remember the names of the four other people because they're simply just that uninteresting. Speaking of Ayla and Fjall, these two have a romantic thing building between them, but it just feels so rushed and again forced because we haven't really spent enough time with them and neither have they with each other. Considering that in episode 1, they considered each other mortal enemies who wanted to kill each other on the spot, and in episode 3, they start banging. We're bang, okay? And I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Relationships are made quicker than in the blink of an eye nowadays, but it's just really hard to care about their romantic fling because it just doesn't feel very earned. Oh, and don't get me started on the villains. The main villain, Baylor, is probably one of the most one-dimensional villains I've seen in some time. He really doesn't care about anything but power. Or well, there is this one girl that he seems to care about but we never really find out why, which basically kills any and all motivation for why he's doing what he's doing. Well, except for his lust for power. Now, I need to rant a little about the ending here, so if you want to be unspoiled, you can click off the video now. Or, well, you've already been spoiled. Anyway, so we know that Blood Origin was going to touch on the conjunction of the spheres, which is the event that resulted in the birth of the Witcher universe as we know. And well, that is precisely what happens in the show. The show briefly touches the subject. The conjunction event itself is just really underwhelming and we don't really see all of the effects around the world. It's basically glossed over and things just seem to go on as normal, albeit with people putting up Witcher contracts at the very end. Overall, this really isn't the worst show ever made, but I would say that it's incredibly disappointing. Then again, I didn't really have any expectations in the first place. Luckily, we still have Henry Cavill, who's the only real bright point in this cinematic universe. Sorry, what's that? He quit? Fuck.